it's getting so cold outside, right? Let's speak about something important today. Let's speak about pneumonia. Pneumonia is a form of acute respiratory infection that affects the lungs. The lungs are made up of small sacs, also called alveoli, which fill with oxygen when a healthy person breathes. When an individual has pneumonia, his alveoli fill in with pus or liquid, which makes breathing really painful and also limits the oxygen intake. Pneumonia is the single largest infectious cause of death worldwide. It killed more than 800,000 children under the age of 5 in 2017, accounting for 15% of all deaths of children under the age of 5. Children and their families are easily affected by pneumonia worldwide, but it is mostly prevalent in Sub-Saharan Africa and South Asia. Children can be protected from pneumonia. Pneumonia can be prevented by very simple interventions and treated by low-tech and low-cost medication and care. While most of the healthy children can fight the infection with the natural defense, children whose immune systems are compromised are at a very high risk. A child's immune system can be weakened by malnutrition, undernourishment, especially in infants who are not exclusively breastfed. Such diseases as symptomatical HIV infections or measles can also increase a child's risk of contracting pneumonia. Acute we use the adjective for when we want to describe something as very sharp or very serious. Pus is a thick yellowish or greenish liquid that is produced in infected tissues. Prevalent. Prevalent means widely spread in a particular area or at a particular time. Malnutrition. Malnutrition means a lack of nutrition caused by not having enough food to eat or not even enough of the good things. Undernourishment is actually a synonym it means insufficient amount of food or other substances for good health or good condition. And now, enough of listening to me, let's listen to what a real professor has to tell us. So first of all, there is an ischemic zone, which then after this early uh, vulneration develops a scar. So this involves a lot of, uh, a lot of growth factors uh, and produces early, maybe mild, uh, mild contractile dysfunction. Was it difficult? So let's try to repeat what the professor told us. So first of all, there is an ischemic zone, which then, after this early vulneration, develops scars. So this involves a lot of growth factors and produces early, maybe mild, contractile dysfunction. Now let's concentrate and watch this video one more time, but this time we're going to use some subtitles. So first of all, there is an ischemic zone which then, after this early uh, vulneration, develops a scar. So this involves a lot of, uh, a lot of growth factors uh, and produces early, maybe mild, uh, mild contractile dysfunction. In English, as well as in Russian, there are a lot of different ways on how to start a sentence. To make your speech richer, you can use some of the following expressions. First of all, for example, First of all, I would like to speak about pneumonia. To begin with. And to begin with, I would like to say that pneumonia is one of the most dangerous diseases today. In my opinion. In my opinion, not so many people know how to treat pneumonia. Moreover, moreover pneumonia is a leading cause of death for children in many regions. Nevertheless, nevertheless, there are a lot of good doctors who can easily handle it. And today we're going to recall the third basic tense in English, future simple, which is basically used for future plans and future arrangements, as you know. Let's have a look at this little table. In positive sentences, we use the auxiliary verb will. For example, I will assist the main surgeon if he lets me, or she will call you as soon as possible. In negative sentences, we use won't, which actually means will not. For example, we won't be afraid of pneumonia if we prepare for the cold season properly, or he will not believe the doctor if he doesn't see the results himself. To ask a question, we put an auxiliary verb will at the beginning of the sentence. For example, will you prescribe me some antibiotics? 
or will they speed up with the results of the test? I need to know what caused her pneumonia. And now it's right about time to discuss future arrangements. To express future plans, we have three different options in English. Future simple is the first one. We use future simple when we make a decision right at the moment of speaking, and this is just a desire. For example, I will be a doctor one day. So the second option is to be going to. For example, I am going to be a doctor. The decision was made before speaking, and we have exact plan, but not sure when it will happen. And the third option is present continuous, when everything is arranged and the plan is definitely coming true. For example, I am going to pulmonologist summit in April. 